What's going on guys? Welcome back to another episode of Trick 10. This is part four of Billy's badass boat build. Now this well build is gonna be so sick. Before I jump into that, I wanna show you something real quick though. Look at this bad boy. Ooh, that thing is fresh. This is going in the Stratos. It's been a good week. It's actually been a really good day. Today is Thursday, November 10th. I just picked this up from the powder coaters and look at that shine in there. It's got like a rainbow sparkle in it. I know that the lights in my garage cannot do this thing justice, but once this thing is out on the water, it is going to look killer. I got the dual graph bridge and the recessed foot pedal tray, both done in the same color. I didn't even know that they could powder coat colors like that. You learn something new every day. I'm pretty stoked about it though. So the next matter at hand, this 1448 well bill is turning out crazy cool. Billy stopped by a little bit ago and we were just sitting here shooting the shit, talking about the boat. He picked up the rest of the hatches he's gonna be painting. And we decided that if we're going to paint this thing and the paint costs $500 a gallon, might as well go ahead with the wrap. The wrap is going to be crazy sick. I mean, the amount of detail that goes into these things is just mind blowing. So this boat is going to be getting wrapped. And I tell you what, I'm just flabbergasted at the fact that the paint job and it's already going to be professional. Now it's getting professionally wrapped. It's going to be one sick ass build. What made the whole conversation of a wrap come up was that today I literally spoke with AG Wraps the company that's wrapping the Stratos, the same company that wrapped King Neptune, and they have finished the proof for the Stratos. The thing is sick, it's super dope. There's a couple little changes we're gonna make, changing some of the tents and stuff, but this is a humongous wrap. I mean, this boat is 20 foot long. This wrap is gonna set this thing off, especially with that dual graph bridge and the recessed foot pedal tray. Mind blown. This is gonna be the baddest fiberglass boat rehab ever filmed on YouTube, maybe ever in the entire world. I'm not gonna waste your time talking your ear off, blah, 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 a bunch of bull crap. I'm gonna get right into this build. I'm getting ready to cut the hole into the front deck. Now, after I get the initial cut into the front deck where the rod locker's gonna sleeve in, I'm gonna have to stage the trolling motor, figure out the angle, stage the graph bridge and the foot pedal tray, just like I was talking about in the last episode. So if you haven't seen the last episodes, go watch them, this is part four already. But I gotta get this thing finished up so I can get the front deck in here. So I'm gonna stage all that stuff. I'll explain what I'm doing and why I'm doing it. You know how this goes. I'm ready to get into it. Let's get back to work. All right guys, so as I was just saying, I'm gonna cut the hole up into this existing front deck so I can figure out how I'm gonna sleeve this pan in here for this side rod locker. Now I don't like rod lockers, but I'm only doing this because you guys wanna see it. So I'm gonna make it happen. Now I've already figured out the height of this and laid it off and I marked it right here, basically where I'm gonna have room to access this pan inside of here so I can keep it streamlined completely down the side of the boat. I'm gonna put you guys on the time lapse because I wanna have some tunes. I need to hear music, I gotta get into the groove. So you're going back on the time lapse. I'm gonna get this hole cut in here and then we're gonna start staging the trolling motor and figuring all that out so I can make sure of the hole for my recessed foot pedal tray because I'm gonna need access from that hole to get up inside here. I'm gonna remove all of the foam. I'm gonna end up putting most of it back as much as I can fit in there when I get to that stage of the game. But for now, it's all gotta go. Let's get back to work. So that was a whole ton of fun. I got all the foam pulled out of the front deck. As you can see, there is a lot of foam inside of this front bench. Now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take all of these big pieces of foam, I'm gonna stack them up underneath the boat, I'm gonna clean this area out real good, vacuum it up, 
and then I'm gonna figure out some sort of bracing. I'll show you what I'm talking about in just a second. Let's get this whole mess cleaned up. I gotta put my tunes back on. Let's get back to work. Now, I got the main hole cut for our rod locker right here into this existing front deck. I have about 20 inches of space from the front of the deck to where it starts to turn up. So this rod locker recess pan is not only gonna have to turn up at about 20 inches on an angle, but it's also gonna have to turn in towards the center of the bow because the V starts to pull it in. If you want to put a rod locker in your boat on the side, I suggest that you get a 52 or a 60 wide. It will allow you enough room on the side to do this. If you wanna use a flat nose boat, it will probably be a lot easier. You won't have to worry about it tapering in. It's still gonna taper up though. I don't recommend those flat bottom boats and the flat nose boats just because of the last video I dropped, they have a terrible problem with the winch eyes on them. Then I went ahead and cut out this recessed foot pedal tray. Now I had a lot of figuring to do with the trolling motor and angles and all that good stuff to figure it out, but I got it done. I pulled a ton of foam out of here. When cutting this hole, I don't care what kind of boat you have, if it's fiberglass or aluminum or what it is, there are floor supports that run from port to starboard across here. And in this build, we cut through a half of one here, a full one here, and we're right on the edge of this one here. So we cut through one and a half floor rib. Those are gonna have to be supported. But what's gonna happen if they're not supported is these things are just tacked underneath here with small little tacks and it's going to end up breaking and this deck is gonna end up getting spongy over time. So I'm going to cut a couple pieces of angle that are gonna span between this front, the middle, and the rib right behind that, spanning three ribs on both sides. Then I'm gonna come back basically like a kickstand that's gonna run from this middle rib down to this floor rib inside of here. And you can see this floor rib inside of here, this is just junk that they had left over. These diamond plate pieces, these are pieces that they had off of sheets that they cut for the floor. They just had whatever they could find laying around and they cut it up and bent it into pieces and tacked them into the bottom of these boats as supports because they thought that you would never see these. Well, the thing is I see all of them because every boat that I do, I do the same exact thing to them. These front decks have to be supported or they're just gonna get real spongy on you and they're gonna end up being a pain in the ass at a later date. So I'm gonna show you guys the inside of this front deck that's existing on this boat, and then I'm gonna start building my kickstand on here. These kickstands are something I put on all of the boats, and whether you can weld or not, you're gonna to have to do this. You could probably rivet the whole thing in there, but it needs to have extra supports if you cut through those ribs, or you're gonna have issues, especially if you got one of those square nose boats, because these things are a lot longer in the front deck, and they seem to come apart a whole lot easier. I'm gonna put you guys on the time lapse. Let's get back to work.
All right, so what I did, I just pre-drilled this piece of inch and a half by inch and a half by one eighth aluminum angle, and I put three holes in there, and basically these three holes, they line up with these ribs that are existing in the front deck. Now, I pre-drilled them so that I have a hole mark, because what I did is I put the drill up underneath of this angle and drilled through the existing rib right here. Then I shot a rivet up through the bottom of here so this thing will stay tight. Now I've got one in here, one into this rib, and I've also got one up into that back rib right there. And the reason I did this is to support this front deck. I'm also gonna come back and I ran this about an eighth of an inch behind where this rib is cut. I'm gonna weld this. I'm gonna weld this whole seam right across here. I'm even gonna reach up in here and try to tack it on this piece here and even tack this one up here. Now you could probably get away just by doing it like this if you're a pretty small guy, but what I'm gonna do is come back I'm gonna run a piece of angle from this one down to this floor rib. That's gonna make sure this thing is extremely strong and you don't have to worry about it failing. If you're not gonna run this rib down here and you can't weld, I suggest that you put more than one rivet in here. I would put at least three, if not four. Space them pretty closely and make sure these things get in there tight. This is gonna keep your front deck from getting spongy over time. And this side right here is pretty tight compared to this side over here, which is pretty spongy still. I'm gonna go ahead and install this one on this side. I'm gonna cut my two pieces from my kickstand and I'm gonna get them tacked up in here and then I'll show you what we got. Let's get back to work. All right guys, so it got cold as crap yesterday. I mean, the day before yesterday, I was literally outside in basketball shorts and a t-shirt working on the boat and it was 77 degrees. And then the next day I fished a tournament with SB and it was like a high of 50 and a low of 41. It was a little bit of rain. It was cold, it was windy, but we actually happened to play second. That was my first bass tournament I ever fished. And I'm not gonna lie to you guys. I caught one fish, the SB cold out of there by like 12 o'clock or earlier. This dude was a beast, man. He was catching fish after fish. I was literally just like a glorified net man. I did my job, I put in my work, and it was cool as crap. I'm probably gonna be fishing a lot more tournaments. Um, anyways, I'm kind of pissed off because I just did the whole install, all the welding into this front uh, recessed foot pedal tray, and for some reason, the damn GoPro decided that it wanted to corrupt my file, so all the footage is gone. It wasn't much though. I'm gonna show you guys exactly what I did. Let's get back to it. It's time to get back to work. All right guys, so this entire recessed foot pedal tray is reinforced. As you can see here, I went ahead and I welded across these ribs, put a little weld up here and in the back. I couldn't get much on them without really climbing inside of there, but the bottom line is with that rivet in there and that weld right there, even that little tack, that thing is a thousand times stronger than any screw or rivet you could ever put in there. Then what I did was I went ahead, I literally just put this rivet in here and this was just to hold this piece up and temporarily keep it in place. This weld across here, it's an inch and a half wide. I went ahead and welded it along here and all the way up this side. I did the same thing on both sides. This is gonna make sure that this front deck is gonna stay sturdy for years to come. I mean, this boat's gonna be out on the water for the next 30, 40, 50 years, who knows? I mean, this is basically a brand new boat. It's a 2022, so, you know, you guys are building out a lot of these boats that are already 30, 40 years old. Well, the thing about this one is, it's gonna be built out the right way the first time, and somebody else is gonna have this boat probably 30, 40 years down the road, and it's still going to be the same integrity that it is right now, then. It's pretty crazy to think about it that way. All right, guys, so I am finally about to figure out this recessed pan for the rod locker. And I know I've been talking about this for two episodes already, but there is so much that goes into this. You can't just jump the gun and start doing this before you install the recessed foot pedal tray or figure out the trolling motor and the grab bridge. All this stuff is precise. Like this boat is going to be built to specifications that are on a very high standard. I had to make sure this was perfect first. Now I am 100% sure that I probably learned some type of mathematical formula in high school or college about how to figure this thing out, but I'm gonna do this the old fashioned way. So what I did was I went ahead and cut a couple pieces of cardboard and I cut them the same height 
vertically from the bottom of this rib up to the top on either side, which is nine and a half inches, and then the width port to starboard, which is seven inches. And it's very simple. This is something you can do. You can do this very easily. These pieces are 24 inches long. So I'm gonna put one on either side and slide it up inside this front hatch. And then I'm gonna take the other piece and slide it up in the front hatch on the floor. Now obviously they don't slide all the way in. So I've got some trimming to do. But what I'm gonna do is just slide these in here as far as I can get them. Once I get them fit perfectly, then I'm gonna tape them together and make sure that it's exactly what I need. I'll cap the front of it off also, but this piece is very critical. I mean, it's gotta be just right. And if you're gonna do it, you gotta do it right. So I'm gonna put you guys back in the time lapse. I'm gonna figure out exactly what I need right here. I'm gonna get this piece trimmed up and build this template. And then I'll show you guys what I'm gonna do with it and how I'm gonna make the actual aluminum piece that's gonna recess up into the front of this deck. Let's get back to work. Now what we have here is a 90 degree bend on this side and the other side, it's probably like a 70 or somewhere in that range. It doesn't really matter because all I know is that from this top side to the other side, I need to have nine and a quarter inches. Now I cut it so it will taper up to the inside of there. And what we got, we'll draw. All right, so I'll bend this side at 90 degrees. And then when I bend this side, I will bend it up where this piece on the top will come up to a nine and a quarter inch space from here to here. So I'm gonna make this out of like a 040 aluminum, so it's gonna be very lightweight. I mean like paper thin, like, you know, ounces, not pounds, ounces of weight in this piece right here. And this is very important. What I'm gonna do though, is I'm gonna bend a one inch lip around this flange on either side. That way I can either tack it or I'm probably just gonna rivet it into the existing front deck. I don't have enough turf to turf the entire interior of this rod locker. And even if I did, I think that the carpet will support the rods and protect them even better than the turf would because the carpet is thicker and it allows more cushion for the rods that are going in here. So the only carpet that I will do inside this entire boat will be inside of this rod locker right here. And I might even try to just make this out of one piece because I could literally just lay this flat on a sheet of metal, trace it, shear it, cut it out, and just bend it on these lines. And that's probably the easiest way that I can do this. I won't have to really worry about it. The only piece I'll have to put implant into it will be the cap for it. And as long as I keep this at nine and a quarter on the top, it will slide right in here. And when I lay this out, I'll just add an extra lip on this side and this side, and that'll give me what I need to attach it into the existing front deck. Now, I'm gonna take this to work with me tomorrow. I'm gonna figure this out, and I'm gonna get this piece built. Once this is installed, then the live well is getting permanently installed with the drain, and the entire front deck will be installed, and I'll work my way on to the back of the boat. I'll see you guys tomorrow. Let's get back to work.
So as you just saw in the last couple of clips, I got this entire rod locker pan sleeved up inside of the front deck. Now, when I originally built this template, I built it out of cardboard and it was closed, but obviously cardboard is a whole lot more pliable than the aluminum's gonna be. Once I made it out of aluminum, I could not fit it up in there the way the cardboard did. So what I had to do was I had to kick the front of this thing over towards the center, about three quarters of an inch. What that did to me back here on this side is it actually made it stick out about an inch and a half. So I just drew a line on it, I cut it back, and then I rebent a lip right here. Now, I did this by hand. I just clamped a piece of tube up to it, pulled it back, and I smacked it with a hammer right along this corner just to tighten it up a little bit. But that's the beauty of using something so thin and so light is you can literally move it and bend it by hand. Now, the way this thing is set up, I can come back in here and I can rivet through here and here and here and here, and this thing's gonna be tight and suck up in there. And this lip that sticks out longer, I left it sticking out longer for a reason. Because when I run my floor in here, I'm gonna run this floor up over top of this, and that way I can shoot rivets down through this. And once it's carpeted, there won't be anywhere for his rod tips to get snagged up on or hooked up on or anything like that. It's gonna make it very simple, and it's gonna be Pretty nice. The entire rod locker will be like one enclosed unit. The overall measurement that I have from the inside of this pan to the existing rear deck is 97 and a quarter inches. Once I carpet that, it's gonna be about 96 and a half inches. That's almost two thirds of the boat. That will easily allow him to fit an eight foot rod in here, no problem. I think that that is more than enough for a 14 foot boat. I honestly think that that's a huge win. An eight foot rod locker and a 14 foot boat, you're doing something right. So now what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna move on to this live well. This live well is already done. Only thing I have to do is install the drain and I'm gonna run a piece of one inch schedule 40 pipe through the bottom of this live well and through the bottom of the hole. It'll be welded on the top of the live well, on the bottom of the live well, then it will drop through a hole in the bottom of the hole and it'll be welded from up underneath the hole. I will insulate the entire live well on the outside with some one inch closed cell foam. Then I'll wrap it with some HVAC tape. I am definitely not gonna use pour foam in here. I don't care what you say about it, it's not going to make your live well into a Yeti. It's basically going to clog up the bottom of your floor drains and it's going to end up be dead weight and waterlogged and it's going to be heavy as crap. So I'm going to insulate this with one inch closed cell foam and I'm going to wrap the entire thing. It's going to be sick. It's going to be what you need. It's going to be better than a Yeti. This thing is going to keep those fish alive all day, multiple days if they got to stay in there. Anyways, I want to show you all something else. Billy stopped by yesterday and he dropped off some more hatches. This dude is a freaking painter painter. He changed the game up on me with this one though. Look at this thing. This is the rod locker hatch. Now this is like a black base with a purple flake in it. And he showed me a couple different samples of what he painted. Some of them were like purple purple. But then he came up with this one and this one is dope. I mean look at it. It's so crazy. It looks sparkly. And when the sun hits it, it's shiny. And it, when the shade is on it, it's just like a black. You can't even hardly see the sparkle at all in the shade. So it's pretty cool. It's almost like a chameleon paint. I mean, I don't know anything about painting stuff like this. I know that this piece right here probably has like eight layers of paint on it, eight coats. I don't know how to do that. I think it's cool as crap though. I'm gonna have to learn because I wanna be able to do this. I, I need to know how to do this. Anyways. This is gonna change the whole game up. This whole boat build is gonna be insane. I mean, once I get this turf in here, this purple marble turf, we're gonna put a wrap on the whole outside of this thing. I mean, it's gonna be next level. And what really makes it cool to me is that I had the opportunity on Sunday to fish with SB Fishing TV in a tournament and we fished out of King Neptune. It was the first time I fished out of King Neptune and we fished a tournament. And, and just at the beginning when everybody blasted off and we all picked our spots and started fishing, 
I watched SP fish and this dude's like a machine. I'm telling you, he was up there throwing four different baits in like 10 minutes and he figured out what the fish wanted and then it was boom, 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 it's on. I was just netting fish after fish and literally by like 11 o'clock, we had five fish in the boat. I did catch one fish and I'll be damned if 30 minutes after I didn't catch that fish, SB called him and we just pulled him out and threw him out. But it was insane, man. I mean, within the first four hours of that tournament, I got to see firsthand what it was like to fish out of one of my own boats. I mean, not just any boat, but King Neptune. King Neptune had so much into it. Like I put so much into that boat. That literally was like my whole heart and soul in that build. And it showed exactly what it was to me. And it was sick. We almost won that tournament. If I could have caught a damn fish that was, you know, four pounds, we would have won. But we were literally like a pound away from first place. It was still sick. I mean, we went out there, we wanted some money. We got second place and I didn't do very much besides net fish. The tournament was pretty fun though. And I really had a good time fishing with SB and I brought King Neptune home with me because he has the Ranger and he's got a bunch of stuff going on. His Jumbo season's over and I want to fish out of King for a while. I'm going to do some upgrades to it and I'm pretty excited about it because I'm actually probably going to fish some local tournaments and we'll see what happens. But this boat right here, it's going to be one of my finest works. I mean, I say that about all of them because I feel like they all get better and better and better and they all have different things in them. But at the end of the day, I build these boats with passion. I mean, I want these boats to be something that is going to live on long after this person's fishing career is done with. This boat is going to be handed down to either a son or a daughter or a family member of somewhere or they're just gonna sell it. And some lucky sucker is gonna end up with one of my boats and have no clue what the hell it is. And he's gonna be like, what in the world is this thing? This thing is so sick, I cannot believe that I got this. That's what it's all about to me. I like building stuff that's outside the box. I like building stuff that's gonna last a lifetime. My boats aren't put together with a thousand rivets and countersunk screws. It's an entire welded hull, an entire welded deck. And when this thing is done, it's a boat that's gonna last a lifetime. I'm trying to wrap this video up because I want to drop this video and get on to the next one. So I'm going to start working on this live well tonight. I'm going to go ahead and get back to work. So this entire boat build is really starting to come together. I'm starting to see what it's all about. After fishing that tournament with SB out of Neptune, I realized that the way I built that boat for other people to fish these tournaments is exactly what I would want. I cannot wait until I tear apart my tracker. I'm gonna build that thing the exact same layout as King Neptune. I mean, I don't think it can get any better than that. There's nothing out there that is superior to that build. I mean, every inch of the boat is used. You have everything you need. Every storage space, the live well, the entire thing is just laid out perfectly for what you could wanna do in those tournaments. And it just showed me exactly what i did is exactly everything you could ever want in a boat now i don't build boats for joe schmo and your everyday fishermen i mean if your budget's up there i'll build you whatever you want i try to help everybody but at the end of the day i am building tournament john boats these are boats that are going to fish in tournaments every weekend that are out on the water for eight to ten hours a day they're catching fish these guys are trying to win money you don't mind spending $10,000 on their boat because you could win $1,000 a weekend out of fishing out of your boat if your boat is set up correctly. And you can jury rig your stuff and you might be able to get through. The bottom line is if you really wanna have it set up professionally and you want a boat that's gonna last you a lifetime, there's only one way to do it. You gotta start with a welded hull. Your entire decks have to be perfectly set up everything has to be like a piece of art and i really got a whole new perspective for the whole tournament jumbo build after fishing one tournament i'm gonna start fishing some more tournaments just because not only did i enjoy it but i think it's good for me as a boat builder to see what is going on and how the tournaments fish and know what i need and want and stuff like that but i can tell you this I fished a tournament out of King Neptune with SB and there was literally nothing else that we could have wanted when we were out there, out of the boat, period. So I think I got this thing figured out. And I think a lot of you guys realize that I got this thing figured out. That's why you're watching my videos. 
I gotta get some sleep because I gotta wake up early tomorrow. Tomorrow, I'm dropping off the Stratos at AG Wraps because that Stratos is getting wrapped with a crazy, insane wrap on it. Literally this morning, my wife called me and had an epiphany and she was trying to change the entire design. We have finalized this design a week ago. We've been working on this thing for like a month and it was all set in stone. This morning, she flipped the script on me and changed the whole thing and we made some modifications. But tomorrow morning, I'm dropping the boat off and it's gonna get wrapped on Thursday and I'm taking this boat to Lake Gasson for Thanksgiving next weekend. It's going to be sick. I'm going to do a complete walkthrough. I'm going to show you guys the entire wrap. I'm going to go out and catch some fishing. I'm going to spend some time with the family. I'm pretty excited about it. The best part for me is that I'm going to be in Lake Gaston, you know, 100 miles away from my house, my shop, these boat builds. It's just going to be me and the family and the boat and the videos. So I'm going to share all that with you guys. Y'all got to stay tuned. I appreciate y'all watching. Hit that like, subscribe button. I'll see y'all next time. I got to get back to work.